Hello, it's Clyde again from Vibrant Soap, and I'm continuing my series of soap making based on photographs and paintings that I've made. Um, a couple years ago, we went to Cambodia, and when I saw Dave's photograph of three monks in their bright orange robes, I thought, you know, I really have to paint this, and it has turned into one of my more popular paintings. So I was looking for a painting that I could do a soap um, with the drop swirl. And as you know, drop swirls are difficult to control. They do what they want to do. So I'm going to, again, exercise some artistic license and, and not care how that orange drops in. But I am going to try to keep them in three distinct areas, just like they are um, in the placement of the monks in the photograph. So I hope you enjoy this one. Thank you for your feedback on um, YouTube. I really like that. And let's get started. Okay, I'm back, and this time I thought I'd spare you from all the blender stuff because you know what that looks like. I'll do it next time, but I'm saving some um, power on my on my battery too. My three main batches are right here. I'm doing the purple, a green, and the orange is, of course, the robes of the monk. And I also have some yellow. It's the same yellow, but if I don't put them in separate containers, I forget and just dump it all in the in one big bunch, and then I regret it. So let's see. Get that all going. So what I'm going to do in this is. Uh, do three separate in the pot swirls again. And I'm going to do those pours a little differently. The first two pours I'm going to do, I'm going to try to get to layer flat in the mold. And then the orange is just going to be poured in as a drop swirl. Let's see how that turns out. So let me blend my purple and I don't really mind over blending this this time because of the fact that I want them to be a little more um, saponified before I pour them that way they can stay as separate levels. Okay, so I got all kinds of bubbles in there, but I'm going to have to stir that out. Okay, so let me show you up close. Maybe you can see some of those bubbles. Lighting's very hard, but if you look at your soap very carefully when you stir it like this, you can see um, bubbles come to the surface. And so uh, it's better to get rid of those now than later. Although I'm going to do my um, tap down my mold once I get it in there as well. Okay. So there's my purple. And I don't need as much of the color that's going to be um, poured in there with, for the in the pot swirl. So that's why I use these little containers. You have so many things to think about at the last minute when you make soap that if you can even use your containers to help you remember to pour less of your main batter into a particular color um, that you have waiting for it, um, the better, because I'll forget even though I have notes to look at. Okay, so this is going to be the in the pot swirl with the purple and light blue. And you've seen probably a lot of videos where people pour for their in the pot swirls at different heights and that's just to make sure that 
that swirl is consistently through the in the pot swirl. So I'm not planning on using any of this on the top, so I'm going to try to get as much out of it as I can. Okay, so one spin. So you don't mix the colors, you just want them to swirl. And I'll get that in my mold. You can see how that naturally swirls. And that's going to look nice. And this is a blend of some fruit scents, apple, green apple. But the main scents are um, mint and, I have to look at my notes, forget, mint and rosemary. So the name of this soap is Merry Mint. This would be a typical sort of holiday soap. Let me pound this down. Okay, and the next colors I'm going to use is my green. So that's pretty thick. And I'm going to use my yellow. Part of my Okay, so this is pretty thick, so I want to make sure it's fluid enough for the yellow drop swirl to fall down into that green. When you stir it, sometimes it comes back like this, so it's pretty liquid. It always scares me though, because I think it's going to solidify. So from up high, can see it go into the soap like that, a little bit on top. Get that in there. And all my colors, I blend it using different micas and pigments to make sure I get the color that I want. Give this a little stir, a little bit more than the other one. Now, here is the trick. I want to try to get this to lay on top of this one as much as possible. So I'm pouring on my spatula so it lays flatter on the bottom layer. So this is where um, the soap solidifying a little bit works in your favor. And notice that this is more green than yellow. That's exactly how I want it because if you look at the, the painting it's predominantly green. Okay, so I'm gonna save some of that for the top. Tap this down. Okay, now why did I save some of that for the top? And the reason is, if you look at the painting again, there is more green on top. Actually, before I forget, I'm gonna actually add a little bit more green to that for a darker green. And I won't forget to uh, put that in. Okay, now I've got to blend my other yellow and my orange. It's really setting up. Okay. It's a little harder than I would like it to be. Let me tap this down. Because the harder it is, that this yellow that I'm going to pour into it has to really penetrate that thicker soap. So I've got to pour it from higher, but it's still going in. So, wow, that's makes me happy that it's going in. Okay, and again, a little swirl, just a little bit. Now these are the monk's robes, and I want to try to get that to go into this one in three different locations. So there, there, and there. I don't think I was very successful, so I'm going to use this to push it in a little bit. OK, 
Okay. So on top, I'm going to put this dark green. It's already overflowing out of the mold, but I think I can use a swirl to push it in a little bit. Okay, so let me clean that up a little bit. Okay. I've kind of gotten away from doing these big swirls on top because some people just like a flat top. I'm not going to peak them too high. I just want them to be away from the sides. Let's see. And try not to get peaks that are too high. I just want a nice cons consistent texture up on top. Okay, and I think that's it. Um, so I'm going to say goodbye to you now. We'll see what this looks like when I cut into it. I'm going to now just turn off the camera and um, use a small mold to take care of this extra batter that I have. So we'll see you soon. This is Clyde Yoshida from Vibrant Soap. And check out my website. And we'll see you later. Bye.